What's up, party people? This is Jose Heredia with The CrossFitter Show, and I am sitting next to uh, one of these great little uh, promo items that they give out at the NAM shows and Mobile Beach shows. This is the keychain version. Uh, you have to see the full-size version, though. It is really a sight to see. I'm just kidding, folks. Actually, I'm here at the B-52 factory. We're going to do a tour of the factory, checking out all the cool little toys and machines that make the B-52 speakers and amplifiers happen. And uh, this is actually one of the pieces they built for a promo for their car stereo division when they first started back in the 80s. Uh, this is uh, no longer used anymore, but I thought it'd be a great start to our video segment for this week. So come on in, check us out at the B-52 factory here in Huntington Park. All right, party people. So I'm standing next to a good friend of mine, Ken Heath, who is from B-52. Awesome guy. Thanks for inviting us over, Ken. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Elvis, yes. So Ken uh, is going to give us a tour of the factory. Uh, we wanted to see exactly what's the life of the, the whole speaker buildup, sure. starting with the raw materials and coming over to something that we call, what is this called? This is a CNC machine. It automatically, we put the wood on there, and it cuts the wood, drills the wood, routers the wood, inlets for the handles, the speakers, Everything that has to be done to make the basic piece is done here and it maximizes it to get the most number of pieces out of each sheet of plywood. So it's a computerized uh, controlled machine. Milling machine. Yeah. Milling machine. Yeah. And this is high tech stuff. This is one of the few machines I hear in the Western Hemisphere. Yeah, the, there's uh, a lot of machine, uh, CNC machines are used in uh, like automotive and aircraft industry to make parts and things. Uh, we use it here with wood to make speakers. All right, Ken, so here is the next step. What is this step? All right, over here is where we take all the parts that we've cut out with the CNC machine. Uh, some of the parts, like the internal bracing and things, are cut by hand on, on table saws. And we have a big automatic table saw that will cut a lot of big pieces for us and then they come over here and we have guys who assemble them uh, glued stapled screwed and they they turn them into cabinets what are some of the methods do you use to hold it together staples glue screws yeah staples staples and glue quite a lot and uh, they, they get built and then uh, they just go step by step through the process. You can see, if you look around, you'll see that there's stacks of parts, there's interior pieces partially finished, there's exterior pieces partially finished, and they just step by step get assembled and start turning into speakers. Cool, cool. And the next step after this? The next step after this is to get the assembly and some preliminary painting and the batting material, the sound dampening material that gets put inside, and then uh, just right on down the line until we load the speaker drivers in them and the crossovers and that we make here, and then they get tested. Excellent, so we're gonna go ahead and go to the next step and get a little batty and a little goofy with the paint. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, Ken, so uh, now uh, we're in the paint department and batting department. What is batting? The batting is a, an acoustic control for the inside to keep the sound from bouncing around too much inside the cabinet. It's a, um, a fiber fill material. Uh, they use the same kind of stuff as used in uh, the insulation for jackets, sleeping bags, all that kind of stuff. It's uh, flame retardant and uh, just controls the sound real well. Mm -hmm. uh, this, over in this area is where they they f get the assemblies and then they will paint the inside of the cabinet black so when you're looking in through, you know, anywhere you don't see white wood, you know. Uh, they put the batting in over here, which keeps the sound even 
keeps a lot of vibration and, and the bouncing frequencies and stuff from you know interfering with what you actually want the music to sound like. And uh, yeah, they do that over here. Excellent. So, is this a special paint or is just a regular enamel? Uh, it's the, this part is a regular paint, and then the whole thing is painted with a, a special coating. Uh, in the paint booth, and we'll we'll go there in a little bit. Yeah, please don't tell anybody I touched it. Yeah. Sorry, don't touch it. The paint's wet. Sorry, don't tell anybody. <laughs> All right, Ken. Uh, now we're here, uh, standing in front of a pot, and it doesn't smell like menudo or pozole. Look at that. What is that? Glue. Glue. This is where they put the carpet on the outside of the speakers. And we don't screw around a little bit of spray glue and then maybe it peels off in six months. We roll the glue on. This is hot glue. It has to be kept at a certain temperature to be melted. We roll it on and it sticks really, really good. And so it gets covered throughout the whole uh, unit. We have our the ladies who do the upholstery here. They, we have the material all cut to size. They do one side of the speaker, lay it on, that sets up, they roll it over, they do the next side, bring it around, they finish all the edges. They, everything you've ever seen on a carpeted B-52 speaker happens right here. Excellent. Well, thanks, Ken. Let's see if uh, we can go ahead and get some more it's, it's high a, on glue. It's lunchtime. You want a big bowl? Sure. sure. This looks good on chili. All right, Ken, so I noticed that there's a lot of naked speakers here, and there's paints. I'm guessing this is the paint department. This is the paint department. We are standing in the spray booth. Uh, these speakers, we've already, you know, done the basic body work on them. It's a kind of a two-part thing. They, they paint them black with the coating, and then we sand them, and then we put the body filler on them. And when we get them all the way we want them to be, they bring them here, and they spray them with the finish coating which is a industrial coating that a company in Germany makes that's very tough. Uh, it's a, a couple different manufacturers in the industry use it. Um, it's, it dries kind of a, a pebbly kind of rough finish so it's not just smooth so fingerprints don't show as well and that kind of thing and, and it's, like I said it's really durable and uh, this is where it goes from being a naked speaker to getting clothed. Don't tell the painter I touched the speaker. See, he touched him again. Sorry. You know, hey, you gotta explain to your wife how she's gonna get this out of your clothing. I don't. <laughs> All right, Kent, so we're inside a room filled with crossfaders. Actually, we're in a room filled with crossovers. Crossfaders. There's a crossfader here. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. You're yeah, right. Yeah, it's crossover. I want it to be crossfader, but they're crossovers. So what are crossovers? Well, they are the piece inside the speaker that sends the different frequencies to the driver that will reproduce them properly. We make our own here. Earlier in the cutting area, we saw the copper clad board and this is where it comes and it gets assembled into whatever crossover it needs to be. Okay, It gets divided properly so when the components are mounted on it, only it only makes contact in the way we want it to make contact. Uh, PC boards, the very, very detailed ones in like computers and things like that. These are very basic, but crossovers are very basic. And so Teresa behind us is putting together she puts together most of the crossovers from the units. All of them. If, if you have a B-52 speaker, she's had something to do with it. <laughs> so uh, you have different crossovers for different uh, speakers? For different speakers, for different applications to make them, depending on the driver, if it's a two-way or a three-way speaker, or even a full-range speaker, it obviously won't have one because there's nothing to separate and send out. Uh, but yeah, we, we have the, from speakers we built many years ago to the very latest ones we build, they all happen right here. 
So it's the cross over, not the cross fader. Yes, crossovers on cross fader. Got it. All right, Ken, so once the speaker goes through its upholstery and painting, it gets clothed, what's the next step? It gets assembled. We bring it over here into this area, and these are the uh, LX18 V3s, an 18-inch folded horn subwoofer. And here's where the metal corners get put on, the rubber feet get put on, the wheels get put on, the handles, the grill plate, the speaker drivers, the crossovers, the amplifiers, depending on what speaker it is, it all gets put together right here and tested. So sometimes this area is just the sound of the screw guns, other times it's loud. Is this the last step? No. There's one more step. Yes. Well, you have the assembly, then the testing, then they get cleaned up and packed and boxed up. So, and that all does happen in this area. So they'll get, they clean them up, they put a plastic bag over them. If they're a powered speaker, they make sure they have the power cord. Uh, and either way, they make sure they have the manual, the warranty card and everything in them. Then they get boxed up. We load them on trucks and ship them out all over the world. Excellent. And then it goes to a retailer, which our friends, our viewers, actually get to buy from. Yes. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, Santa Claus. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Love the belly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ken. So we went throughout the factory, saw the process of cutting the wood, putting the wood together, uh, painting it putting some, uh, what was it, that stuff inside? Batting. Yeah, we went batty with the batting. Yes. Uh, we saw them uh, painting it and putting the crossover, crossfader in there. Uh, <laughs> yes, the speakers with the crossfaders in yeah, Speakers with the crossfaders in them. And then there's the final part, which is the packaging and then the sending out. After they're assembled and tested and cleaned up and boxed up, they end up on a pallet like this and this will get wrapped in plastic and it will get sent wherever right. they want to send it. Now, the reach of B-52 is global, yes. so you guys have companies and customers all over the place. We have distributors all over the world. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you could ever want to go, you can find B-52. And then uh, you also have uh, uh, some online products that people can look at. Uh, what's the website, the Twitter account? They can go to our website which is, is b-52pro.com. So b52pro.com, but you gotta have the little dash in the middle. Or Otherwise, I'll take you to another website. Not the underscore, but the little dash in the middle. I wanna thank you, Ken, for inviting me over thank to the you. factory. It's been a real hands-on experience. I actually got paint on me, I got dust on me, I got a little piece of something in my eye. I should have worn. No, see, he's just making that up. He's just getting misty because it's over. Yes, the, the tour is over, but thanks a lot for coming. Uh, but thanks a lot, Ken, for giving us around. Any last words, comments that you'd like to say to the viewing audience? B-52, made in America. We use them here, we build them here. <laughs>